If you lived in the year 1870 and the future could whisper into your ear, it might say something like this. There are these things called germs. They're microscopic objects. The eyes can't see them and they cause infection and can lead to death. Now, if you're like most people in the 1870s, you're not going to believe that craziness. You're telling me that things beyond the resolution of my eyes are the cause of disease, infection, and potentially death. That is how the future always works. It presents ideas that we find to be bizarre and unintelligible. That's been the case throughout history. Is the Earth the center of the universe? <laughs> or does the Earth orbit around the sun? So if we imagine the 25th century whispering into our ears, what might they say? And when they say it, how might we control our knee-jerk reactions so that we don't reject it at a hand? What I think the 25th century might say is that for the first time in human history, death may no longer be inevitable. Now that does not mean immortality. It means that we have a horizon of extending our health spans and lifespans to degrees that are previously unimaginable to us. In this moment, we know that things are changing very fast. Technology is progressing at speeds that makes it hard for our minds to comprehend. We don't want to miss out in not knowing the big thing that's happening in this moment. That's what Don't Die is. It's an observation that the singular insight that will dominate our time and place as the future looks back at us, they will say, that is the moment when humans acquired the technological ability to dramatically extend their lifespans. So Don't Die is really about the most basic things in life, and it's also the most expansive philosophical contemplations we can have as intelligent beings. Practically speaking, we can say smoking two cigarettes shortens your life by 30 minutes. So we can assign cigarettes a die score. Let's apply that same principle to something else. Let's take a look at a typical American school lunch, a piece of pizza, some chocolate milk, and some canned vegetables. What would we assign for a die score? Should we say just seven minutes for sake of contemplation? So we're feeding our kids die. And the reason why this example is useful because when adults speak to themselves about these ideas of die, adults have a infinitely long list of reasons why they should justify their vices. It's like, I want to live well, not long, YOLO, live fast, die young, death is a positive thing. But when you frame it as us feeding die to kids, it shows how pernicious this thing is. Don't Die calls attention to the embedding in our society that we have built a society around die. Think of it, fast food, algorithms that make us do bad stuff. We are surrounded by things that accelerate aging and increase the probability of death. And then we justify these things as living our best life. And when someone like myself defies those norms, I get heaped upon with hate. And Don't Die is an effort that all of us can rally behind and say this is the most consequential observation of this moment. And we can begin working on Don't Die individually. That's what Project Blueprint has been about. Three years ago, I posed the question, what is our proximity to being able to slow down and even neutralize the aging process? Three years in, we now have the answer. It's pretty compelling. And the way I did that, I measured every organ in my body, getting a biological age of each organ, and then we used the best science to try to slow down my speed of aging and reverse that aging damage. You can take this same process and apply it to almost anything. It's the same thing, whether it's my body, or planet Earth, or school lunch, they're all the same. You're looking at baseline measurements, you look at what the healthy uh, parameters would be, you look at the science, and you implement a protocol. If you're feeling overwhelmed with these ideas, or if you're fighting me really hard right now, and you want to tell me why I'm wrong and why you're right, I would say, I understand. I've been having this conversation at my house in dinners for three years now. I know with 99% predictability what people say, when they say it, and how they say it. To understand this, you have to dig pretty deep into the assumptions. 
If death has always been inevitable, we build our existence around justifying our behaviors around the inevitability. If death is no longer inevitable, you are invited to reconstruct your entire reality. And this is why I don't call it live long or live well or some other positive statement that a lot of people encourage me to say because if you say those positive things, literally everybody is going to say, yep, I'm doing it, no matter what their circumstances in life. If you say don't die, it forces the person to reconcile with everything they understand in existence. So if you want to die, you need to justify why die is a virtue for you and for everyone else. Say you don't wanna die, you need to confront that death has always been inevitable. How are we possibly going to overcome this unimaginable challenge? Don't die is a brand new concept. I said the words for the first time in late 2023 since i've done a few gatherings and now there are hundreds of gatherings in over 58 countries people organically getting together around this concept of don't die i never would have guessed it would catch fire this fast and be this strong i think it's a contender for the strongest movement of this early 21st century that this is something that we can all rally upon if you think about it don't Die is already the most played game by every human on this planet every second of every day. Don't Die is played more than capitalism. It's played more than any religion. It is the most played game in existence. You're playing it right now, I'm playing it right now. It is the single thing that every human on this planet can agree upon. So when we talk about goal alignment or trying to get our priorities synced as a species, this is the one thing that we can agree upon. And it's not even don't die in 20 years, it's don't die right now. Because somebody can look both ways before they cross the street while be smoking a cigarette. But I would encourage you, join this movement, be part of the cause, be don't die in your life. Go to bed on time, eat well, exercise, try to overcome your vices and bad habits. Be the embodiment of this thing. Teach your children or other children and your parents and your siblings. Try to shift their mindset from death being inevitable and therefore justifying debauchery and vices to call them back to say, no, we actually can live a better life. I'm also building a network state that is very similar to a nation state. It has different characteristics where it's not bound by geography necessarily, but bound by network characteristics that you're getting a group of people together with a common objective. And so in this case, we would band together and we would work on individual don't die initiatives. So some may do this with personal health. Some may do it on planetary health. Some may apply to school lunch, others to politics, relationships, auto emissions, like you take any domain in society, you can apply the same concepts. I'm going to gather people together and we will work on these ideas together. So take your given idea and then walk through the process. How do you define death? How do you measure it? How do you actually minimize it and or eliminate it and repeat that process continually? I'm also going to launch a Don't Die app where we will gather together as a community it will be social first and we will encourage each other. There's good evidence to show that we are like our closest friends and those we get exposed to. Instead of algorithms that entertain us until we uh, become stupefied, this will be friends in a community encouraging everyone to be more healthy. We'll have points, it will be gamified, it will be a lot of fun to try to systematically lower die scores and increase life scores. So there's three things for you. First is become familiar with the sources of dye around you. Number two is join the app when it's live to be part of the community to both benefit and contribute to everybody's well-being. And third, if you're interested in pursuing a don't die endeavor and being part of our initial group, I'll have a link in the description below. Include your name and your project and other details so that we can try to expand our working groups to help everybody work on their Don't Die initiatives. Just like democracy, Don't Die will invite 
hundreds and even thousands of follow-on questions that will pertain to ethics and morals and what ifs and all kinds of problems and most likely problems that we haven't anticipated which will probably be the most dominant ones the ones we imagine probably won't be so this is not to say that this solves all things it's meant to say that if the future could whisper into our ears and if we wanted to hear it and be part of the future that this would be the starting point.